Good morning and welcome to my Friday morning office hours. This morning's question comes from Hannah who writes, one thing I'm curious about is balancing writing with creative hobbies. I feel like it's easy for me to either lump writing and reading in with other hobbies, even though I want to be doing it professionally, which deprioritizes it. Or when I'm working on other hobbies, I feel like I should be working on writing instead because it's my highest priority. So if you know anything about me, um, if you've been, you know, checking out my Instagram feed for, I don't know, I guess it's been a couple years since I, it's been a while since I've posted any craft projects, but an important thing to know about me is that I am a novelist and I am also a stitcher. I like to draw. Uh, by stitcher, I mean um, quilting, knitting, I knit this, and I also like to embroider. So I feel really passionately about this question and my answer to this question may be a little bit all over the place because I feel so, uh, so adamant uh, whenever I hear or you know, encounter writers online who say that real writer, something to the effect of that real writers don't have hobbies because there is no time. You must devote all of your creative energy to the study of your craft. I actually think that the opposite is the case. Um, to become a more interesting artist, it behooves you to pursue your other interests. And indeed, I think that our literary culture would be well served if more aspiring novelists studied subjects besides the craft of writing. That's the one piece of advice that I have for aspiring writers is to please don't major in creative writing. If all you study is craft, then what do you have to write about? And so, and I only just noticed this recently, but this is actually really, this is really cool. I kind of blew my own mind here. So with patchwork, this is going to be a postage stamp quilt. With patchwork, you are taking big pieces of fabric and you're cutting them down into itty bitty pieces of varying shapes. This is a super simple one. And I, I realized, you know, when I had these, these are my index cards with my um, work in progress um, novel notes. So this is really interesting, right? Because I'm taking all of these big amorphous ideas that I have, big, you know, big picture themes, all of that sort of thing, and I'm distilling it into, or I'm breaking it down into bites. I'm actually calling them bites, B-Y-T-E-S. And they're even colored. So I have a little bit, a little bite on each index card. And then I'm going, when, I, when I get enough of the novel written down on index cards, then I will start to arrange. I will start to arrange into pleasing combinations. So Elizabeth Gilbert in Big Magic talks about, writes about taking a watercolor class, I believe, and she says that she does this because she wants to open up and explore new avenues, new neighborhoods inside her brain. And this has been my experience with following through on all of the other creative pursuits that bring me a lot of joy um, and absolutely light me up in a different way than my writing does. And I honestly, if you said you'd, you know, you only have, you have to choose one, one artistic discipline. I would find it very difficult to choose because this is, this is such a big part of who I am. And actually, if you have read The Boy From Tomorrow, you may remember the scene in which um, Emily and Josie and Cass are snuggled under this handmade quilt. And I, th I, I don't know, I mean, I guess it's, it's completely subjective, but you know, 
reading that, all of the feeling that I put into that scene, I don't know that I would have been able to infuse it with that intention if I myself were not a quilter. That's just a theory. So what I'm trying to say is that pursuing a hobby or any sort of interest, so it could be another academic discipline, it could be you know some strange obsession that you've had since childhood, whatever it is, when you take some time to pursue that on the side, you are adding depth and dimensionality into your primary creative practice. Now, the only caveat, and this is, I'm sure, you know, some of you watching this may be thinking, it is totally possible to be a dilettante. You can have so many interests because we're passionate people and we're engaged with the world, we're curious, and so we have lots of interests. So it's too easy to, in pursuit of becoming a Renaissance person, right, because you're interested in so many different disciplines, it's too easy to become a dilettante. And a dilettante is someone who is interested in lots of different practices and doesn't really um, gain mastery in any one of them because their attention is so diffuse, right? And that's totally, that is a fair concern. And that's why I recommend that, you know, you have your primary practice. So for Hannah and for me, that is creative writing. We are both writing fantasy novels. And then, you know, you have your, the things that you're researching. And so I might be, you know, researching um, Neolithic burial practices and Neolithic cultures or whatever it is. And that's something that I'm pursuing in the short term uh, as research for my novel. Uh, and then I have creative hobbies, which again, stimulating other parts of my brain, satisfying me in ways that my, my, my written words simply cannot do. My words do not keep me warm. My, my words do not, you know, keep me snug at night. Although I, this, is, this is the first quote that I'm keeping for myself. So eventually I will be able to say that, that this is the practice that keeps me warm at night. So I think that it's important to do the thing that you feel really, really passionate about and let everything else fall away. The things that you're mildly interested in we, we all, each of us are granted 24 hours in a day, right? So I'm, I'm never going to, you know, be the guitarist that I thought that I might be, you know, when I was 10, 11 years old taking guitar lessons in my mother's dining room. I'm not passionate enough about it. I'm just not. There are lots of other things that I'm mildly interested in that I am never going to pursue because I do not have enough time, enough energy, and so for me, it's my, my, my primary practice, which is writing fiction and nonfiction, and stitching in its various forms. And that works for me. And this, this nourishes me. This adds, um, like I said, a, a sense of, I mean, a, a dimensionality to my writing practice. So I think that's... I think that's everything I have to say about this. Um, I think Hannah is talking about, um, in particular, I believe that she's been doing some sketching in uh, planning and you know planning her you know char character development, plot development, and I think that all of those the the, the sort of the sketching that you feel compelled to do, uh, sketching your characters. Um, you know, their, their personal style and, you know, creating a mood, um, you know, where do they live? Like all those, those little things that become more vivid in your imagination once you've sketched them out, absolutely do that. And, you know, that enriches your side writing and that enriches, you know, your first draft in turn. So I think that's everything I have to say about this. I, although I have written more about what I call creative cross-pollination, in inside my new course, a bright clean mind, bright clean mind. The, too many projects. That's my not. That's not my novel. That's my. That is my nonfiction book, a bright clean mind. I am talking about the bright idea kit, which is my my new like flagship course for anyone who wants to 
make some make some tweaks up here to start so that they can start generating more innovative ideas ideas that don't feel derivative of whatever you happen to be whatever fantasy novel you happen to be reading at the at, at the time so uh, check that out if you feel compelled to do so I need to update my my link um, in my bio so that you can be taken straight to the sales page and learn more about it. If you want more content like this straight to your email inbox, just DM me with, I won't even give you the, the sign up link for my email newsletter, just uh, DM me your email address and I'll add you to my list because I have a free private writing mini workshop coming hopefully next week. So, uh, so you wanna be on the list for that. So yeah, so please DM me and uh, message me, leave me a comment below if you have any comments on any thoughts about creative cross-pollination or if you have any questions that I might answer in a future Office Hours episode. So thank you so much for watching. I wish you loads and loads of creative inspiration in whichever form it takes and I hope you have a lovely day.